So today, Samantha Lane, who is going to speak today on marketing, Florida Citrus yesterday's marketing, today marketing, and the future. And I'll tell you a little bit about Samantha. Samantha serves as a public relations manager at the Florida Department of Citrus, and she's responsible, holy cow, what a responsibility, for leading the efforts for brand management, paid media, social media, media relations, and issues, and crisis communication. And holy moly, we have certainly heard a little bit of crisis and greening lately, haven't we? Over 16 years of ex she has over 16 years of experience in marketing, communications, and media relations. Previously, Samantha served as public relations with Legoland and with the University of South Florida Polytechnic, now Florida Polytechnic. She is a graduate of the University of Central Florida, and I've known her for several years, love her, and I am so proud to welcome Samantha Lane to the podium to talk to us about marketing Florida Citrus. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mardis. Um, so I'm so delighted to be here today and really kind of continue that uh, dialogue that you guys started with the Florida Citrus labels. Um, so I'm going to have Jamie actually get quite a bit of exercise as she kind of navigates back and forth um, to show we've got some different videos and things like that to show you today. Um, but really to talk about uh, the history of marketing for Florida Citrus. And so in order to do that, I'm going to give you a little bit of an, an agenda of what we'll cover today. Um, I want to give you a little bit of insight about what the FDOC actually does, just so you kind of understand a little bit of the background and what we're charged with. Um, but also let's talk about what was, certainly the history. You'll see some uh, different uh, commercials um, from back in the day, and then certainly what is today, and really kind of taking a deep dive into what we're doing um, at the FDOC on the marketing front right now. So a little bit of organizational context. Um, the FDOC was established back in 1935. Um, by and we are a state agency but what's interesting about us we're the only agency that is not funded by uh, tax dollars by state tax dollars we're actually funded by the growers for the growers and it was established back then to really um, create there was a surplus of uh, Florida orange juice at the time and uh, really an opportunity to develop a marketing um, and a marketing agency that could promote Florida orange juice so our mission, and I won't read this, but it's really to maximize consumer demand for Florida citrus products. So we represent Florida orange juice primarily, but also uh, grapefruit, uh, fresh grapefruit, grapefruit juice, um, as well as uh, tangerines and things like that, but not lemons and limes or anything. So nothing for you to necessarily digest, but just a little bit of an organizational structure. We actually um, have a nine-person uh, commission. Um, of growers that really kind of govern and guide um, the department's activities. Uh, we have an executive director, Shannon Shep, that kind of leads our efforts. And then you can see that we not only do marketing, but we also do regulatory for the citrus industry, as well as covering international efforts, uh, primarily fresh grapefruit. We do a lot of exports for fresh grapefruit um, and retail promotions, as well as research, both uh, scientifically and uh, economic um, market. So this is a little bit of, um, gives you a little bit of history on the production trends for the citrus industry. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of context. You can see right here as we're on the, um, on the far end of that for uh, 2015 and 16, our production levels are at the lowest that they've been in over 100 years. Um, and so that's uh, pretty significant. Um, and we are actually funded through um, the growers, as I mentioned, but it's a box tax. So every box of, uh, of fruit that the growers sell, we're funded through that. Um, and so uh, not only are production levels down, but our budgets are also down. This gives you um, a little bit of um, uh, context for what the production levels are there in green, um, but what the consumption levels are um, for Florida orange juice uh, in the orange. And then you can see the retail price in blue. So um, prices for orange juice, uh, Florida orange juice right now are, are at an all time high. And the reason for a lot of those production trends is, as you know, the greening. Um, it's actually devastating the Florida citrus industry um, and really taking a toll. You can kind of see the history here, um, you know, with uh, in 1998, the first uh, psyllid, which is the bug that's causing the disease. Um, it actually feeds on the leaves and um, really affects, um, you know, provide and puts a bacteria within the tree that affects its um, production. Um, and so you can kind of see now, it, you know, all citrus producing counties um, are, you know, we're 100% infected with greening. 
So let's take a little bit, and this is where Jamie's gonna get her exercise. I wanna show you a little bit of um, some of the uh, commercials that you may remember from back in the day. So the first one, oh, well, let's first talk, sorry. Um, this is kind of, this shows you some of the, um, the price, the, the trends, the production trends and everything. But you can also see here on the bottom, this is kind of a series of um, looking at the different um, marketing campaigns and, and, uh, that took place over the years. And so we'll dive into that a little bit. Um, and so you may, some of you may remember um, back in the day we had a lot of spokespeople, uh, famous uh, spokespeople for the Florida citrus industry. Anita Bryant is, uh, is a huge one. I think all of you probably remember the days. And so I wanted to give you a snapshot of one of uh, the commercials that focused on the campaign. It isn't just for breakfast anymore. So Jamie, if you could play that. We're looking down on one of Florida's beautiful orange groves, and we're about to find out. Orange juice from Florida isn't just for breakfast anymore. Back in Minneapolis, we drink it by the gallon. Florida orange juice is alive, natural, and I uh, enjoy the taste. Orange juice from Florida is always pure and natural. Nothing's added. It's 100% juice, no matter what form you buy it in. We use it as a snack, and it's a better value than other beverages. Orange juice from Florida. It isn't just for breakfast anymore. You also may remember uh, another spokesperson, Burt Reynolds, and so I'll let, uh, this is really kind of the introduction of when we really started to focus on that health and wellness message. Burt, why'd we have to get up so early and ride through our orange groves? Because we need to have some quality time together. Well, I've been so busy lately getting people to try Florida orange juice. Everybody already drinks it, son. Not every morning, Dad. Florida orange juice. Every morning will get you up and keep you going because it's loaded with vitamin C, natural energy, and it tastes wonderful. Okay, that's enough quality time. I got a life. That 100% pure Florida orange juice. It'll get you on your feet. Hey, hop! Um, and then we went into um, what we consider the triple crown. That's when we were focused on, um, you know, disease prevention. And so here's a, a snapshot of a famous uh, talking ham sandwich. Good morning. Yeah, cow. Who said that? Hey, hey, right up here, next to this poor neglected jug of orange juice. You're a leftover ham sandwich. That's correct. And don't you realize that the American Cancer Society says foods like Florida orange juice may help in the fight against cancer? The American Cancer Society says that? How do you know all this? What else am I going to do? I sit up here and I read the labels. You know, the light goes on, the light goes off. That's pretty much my day. 100% pure Florida orange juice. Are you drinking enough? And this leads into kind of where we were back in 2013, where it was really a message about taking on the day, starting your day with Florida orange juice. Morning, everyone. What's on the agenda? It's 7.45. I'm going to roll my eyes when you try and tell me what to wear. Love it. Jim? You'll wait for me between the hours of 7 and 9, but I actually won't show up until 10. Making me late for work? You got it. Great. Joe? At noon, I'll announce the elevators are out, and you'll have to walk down 18 flights of stairs. In heels? That's right. Excellent. A Principal Miller? I'll be calling to inform you that your son was involved in a little playground scuffle. Fantastic. Good thing I have my orange juice. <laughs> Take on the day with the natural goodness of 100% pure Florida orange juice. So we could have been here for days, actually, taking you through all of the older commercials. Um, but it just kind of gives you, I, I selected a few that just kind of give you a snapshot of some of the different um, campaigns that ran through, through the years. But I really want to talk about what is. Um, and so things have changed a lot. Um, but here's some key moves that we did, um, looking at really taking um, a, a new approach to brand development, and we'll get into that. Um, really focusing all of our communication primarily on nutrition, um, and then all, also with origin, looking at really the Floridaness of orange juice as we looked um, at Take on the Day. As you look at that campaign, there was really very little about Florida focus, and so we wanted to get back to that. And then the position, we talked about the cost of orange juice is higher um, now, and we really wanted uh, to focus on the value of Florida orange juice and that it's worth that, um, that higher price. I'm gonna give you an in-depth look at um, a better brand ambassador that we, that we launched in the last couple years, um, and really targeting millennial moms, why we're doing that, um, and how we're reaching those millennial moms. So first, as we look at brand development, this is just a very quick snapshot of some of the different brand, or some of the different logos that were taking place. Um, and this was a very quick, there was many, many, many more um, logos. So you can see this is what consumers were connecting with. So 
There was no consistency in look and feel, in color palettes, in messaging um, across any of the campaigns. And so consumers were very confused, especially because we're, um, we're not an actual brand that they can pick up in the, um, in the grocery store, but we're a commodity that's promoting the brands that they can um, connect with. And so really having a consistent message was extremely important. Um, and so we really took a look at redesigning everything that we do, coming back to a central core look and feel. And so you can see this family of logos where whether you're promoting Florida orange juice or Florida grapefruit, there's still that consistent look and feel um, that, you, um, that consumers connect with. So anytime they see a grapefruit promotion or a grapefruit campaign, they actually tie it back to orange juice as well. And we also developed um, a, what we call a brand uh, campaign style guide to where really identi um, developing identity standards to where there was a consistent use of the logo and what that brand looks like. And so you can see here really having an opportunity to feature actual Florida growers, again, tying it back to that origin, featuring that Florida-ness of um, Florida orange juice. Um, and really having a consistent look and feel in the way that we talk about everything. The other thing I mentioned was um, the focus on nutrition. That was a that's a huge thing for us, um, you know, especially in um, if you read a series of articles on the internet or in your newspaper, you're going to see a lot of communication about the comparisons of Florida orange juice. The sugar content of Florida orange juice is the same as a, um, as a can of soda. And so really combating that message with a nutrition focus, looking at um, not only is it a great taste, but also um, has uh, nutritional benefits, including vitamin C, potassium, folate, um, and the fact that there's no added sugar. It's all natural. And so we want to focus on that with consumers and really correct that misconception. Uh, this is actually, um, so as you looked at some of the commercials, this is actually what we call a sizzle video that kind of um, is a, a new approach, something that we use in digital advertising. So Jamie's going to play that for us. Days are made brighter. Moments are more memorable. Growing gets sunnier, and healthy gets happier. With 100% Florida orange juice, anything's possible. Because all of life's best stuff is inside. Delicious natural goodness, packed with vitamins and antioxidants. Grown from rich and fertile soil, and perfected by nature. Tended by growers known for producing the juiciest and most flavorful fruit in the world. 100% Florida orange juice delivers the amazing five in every sip. To everyone who knows the benefits of OJ, it's not just what's inside that matters, it's also what you get out of it. Maybe it's the desire for new adventure, or your own personal movement, even a challenge they'd always hope you'd achieve. Drink in a glass. When the natural goodness hits you, you'll unleash your amazing. To go the extra mile, to inspire someone, to be a leader, to be quirky, to be victorious. So drink in all the awesomeness, because with 100% natural Florida orange juice, there's amazing inside. So what we've done is really created a series of assets. So that's certainly um, you know, one of the assets that we were able to, you know, uh, videos that we were able to do um, you know, to create um, that inspiration around Florida orange juice. Um, the next step that we took, um, this was in 20, uh, 2014 actually, um, is really taking a look at a better brand ambassador. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about a program that we launched. This was actually um, a program that we did with Marvel. If you were, I, I'm not sure if you saw media coverage over it, but um, prior to then, we had um, kind of a mascot, if you will, that was in the shape of an, or it was an orange, um, so shape of an orange bowling ball, actually going into um, second grade, uh, primarily classrooms, and really talking about um, nutrition and things like that. So it was a little bit difficult as we're kind of combating the sugar debate, and then you come in while an orange certainly makes sense. He was in the shape of um, a bowling ball, and that was a little bit of a difficult message, um, you, know, you know, trying to combat that sugar message. And so we took a look at that program and said, you know, it's a great program. We want to educate, um, the, you know, these young learners. But really, how can we do that? And so we took a, we partnered with Marvel and we said, let's look at a, a new character design for Captain Citrus and how can we do that? Um, and we actually developed um, comic books with the Marvel Avengers. 
And so I'll kind of go through that. We distributed a million printed comics um, throughout schools across the nation to really start to educate. Um, you know, kids love comic books, and, um, and it's a great way to kind of share that nutrition message in a creative way. Um, and so we also did um, uh, inserts into one of their uh, DVDs. I'll show you an image of that, um, which was 2.4 million. That was teasing up Captain Citrus. We also did um, a Comic-Con. Uh, activation that's actually I don't know if you know what that is but it's actually um, a large convention of um, comic fanatics that actually come together in uh, New York City so we actually launched Captain Citrus there um, an animated teaser as well as contest activation and so it was a very large program um, that really um, was very successful so this is the DVD insert that I mentioned. It was a great opportunity. At this time, we didn't know what he was going to look like yet. We were still in that costume design. Um, but it was teasing that up as this was um, you know, going into the Winter Soldier's uh, DVD. So we started to tee up what he might look like. We did a huge reveal media event in a large comic um, store, comic book store in, out of Tampa. And we had a lot of media coverage from it. And we'll talk about this. So this, he went from a round orange to a very fit um, superhero. So it gave us a great, and tied to Marvel, there's already a love around Marvel, um, you know, with all of their movies and everything. Um, so this is him revealed in actually one of the comics. So just giving you kind of a look. Uh, we did a series of three comic books where there were different storylines where it's a very subtle message for us to educate, but um, kids absolutely love it. And it's something that we're still able to do. Um, in the classrooms, there's um, most of the kids now are using iPads and things like that and a lot of online learning. And so all of these comics are digital readers that, uh, that teachers can actually incorporate um, into the classroom and into their lessons and do a fun activity. Um, and so there's three different comics. We also did printed uh, comics, a million uh, throughout the nation that came along with a teacher's guide to do some um, educational um, material along with it. From the reveal event that we did um, in September of that year, um, we had a lot of media coverage. So this is just a snapshot of some of our local coverage. But you can see um, this earned media, you're looking at, you know, they're incorporating our logos, everything. But in everything, um, in everything that we got, the nutrition message was there, um, which was amazing. This will give you a, a little bit of a recap of some of the coverage that we got. Captain Citrus is getting a makeover. It's the new Captain Citrus. His name is actually Captain Citrus. America's newest hero is right from Florida. Meet Captain Citrus. Captain Citrus. The first mission will be to promote the benefits of OJ. And deliver knowledge to kids that oranges have these amazing five ingredients. For us, it's important to, that we get the message out how nutrient-dense and how good Florida orange juice is for, uh, for a healthy diet. And when you get kids started young, they develop good habits for a lifetime. Captain Citrus will appear in comic books that will be distributed at schools and in other Marvel products. Okay. It's going to be fascinating to see if that works. Yeah, yeah. we'll see. All in an effort to drink mm -hmm. your OJ. Rashad Glinton already does every day because it's good and it's healthy for you and now off to make other kids commitments just as strong in Lakeland Ken Suarez Fox 13 News um, so you can see um, we got amazing coverage um, and so I'll talk about that in a minute but we also took a next step of really um, taking him to a new level and animating him to provide um, different uh, messages for around nutrition there's amazing inside 100% Florida orange juice. I'm Christian Spinoza. I'm a Florida citrus grower, and I'm Captain Citrus. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Captain Citrus headquarters. As a superhero, I face tough choices every day. Getting a chance to do the voiceover for Captain Citrus has been a very unique and learning experience. Going from the first take where, you know, I'm going in blind, not knowing what to say, not, how, not knowing how to say it. And then going down to take you know 200 something that we did, being a citrus grower and, and reading the story behind Captain Citrus and John Polk, it's, it's pretty neat. And being that guy, you know, like I'm a citrus grower and I live in, in the orange groves like John Polk did, it was, it was neat reading that background story and getting to portray Captain Citrus or being the voiceover for Captain Citrus. 
I'm creating a 3D character that's based on the Marvel character that they created, uh, and I'm translating him from 2D drawings to 3D characters so that I can animate him for web ads and web takeover advertisements, uh, where he'll fly through the paper and do all sorts of cool animation to make the kids say, wow, I love orange juice, I want to try it. Captain Citrus here. How do I stay healthy? Keeping active in a balanced diet with the nutrition of 100% Florida orange juice and the amazing five. Be a hero like me. Enter for a chance to appear in the Marvel Avengers Assemble animated series. So again, you know, the former Captain Citrus was actually from outer space. So it was a great opportunity for us to again hit that origin message um, and really ground him from Florida. So he, his, his um, alter ego is John Polk. Um, he's actually a Florida grower um, right here from Polk County. Um, and so Christian Spinoza, as you saw, is a grower, a Florida grower, and somebody that the kids can connect to. So making that more of a powerful story and a powerful backstory. Um, all in all, earned media coverage, we had over 850 stories in six continents. Uh, the only continent we weren't able to get was Antarctica because they do more research news. Um, we tried really hard though. Um, so 350 million impressions, but what's amazing, and we don't normally tie our earned media back to um, the advertising value, um, but in this case, because you saw our logos and our message um, being pulled through in every single story, um, we really equate it, we could um, tie that back to what that advertising value would be, and it was $1.5 million. So that's what it would have taken us for us to pay for that, um, that coverage that we were able to get. Um, and here's another video, Jamie, sorry. Um, and this kind of shows you, um, this is kind of when you know you've made it, when you make it into pop culture. So watch this. Welcome back to Millionaire. Joining us now from Bayshore, New York, give it up for Susan Dorsey Nelson. You Hi, look you great. Oh, thanks. You look good, too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let's get right into it. The questions have already been shuffled. The money values have been shuffled, too. You have all your lifelines. Are you ready to play? I am ready. <laughs> Let's play, millionaire! Here is your first question. Created to promote Florida's largest agricultural export. In 2014, what rotund superhero from Planet Orange got a million dollar makeover from Marvel? Super Squash, Captain Citrus, Avocado Girl, Crazen Man. Immediately, Planet Orange leads me to believe that the answer must be B. Captain Citrus. That is the only orange is a citrus fruit. So it's the first question. I'm a little ah crazy, but I okay. think that that is what it has to be. So I'm going to say Terry B. Captain Citrus, final answer. You are correct, Yay! Susan. <laughs> Let's put some fruit in your bag. Yes. $2,000. That's how you start the game. Thank you. That's how you start it. So you can see that you kind of know when you made it, when you didn't have to pay for that placement at all. Um, they actually didn't even contact us. That was something we picked up in our uh, media monitoring. And so um, that was pretty amazing to, to kind of hit pop culture. So, um, so really, we took a look at um, really defining who we were going to go after as well. So we had the brand um, now. We had a, ban a brand ambassador with Captain Citrus, but really looking at uh, targeting millennial moms. Um, so we're going to you know, briefly go through that. But marketing, so you saw some of the old commercials um, and the way that, um, that we used to advertise Florida Citrus. Um, but marketing has really changed. With the invention of um, cell phones and mobile devices and things like that, millennial moms are on their phone all the time. Um, so traditional uh, advertising no longer works. So here's another video. This is kind of an inside, um, you know, you can hear specifically from millennial moms and kind of the way um, that they consume media now. The millennial mom has more to do and less time to do it. 
and she doesn't know all the answers. That's what Google is for. In fact, the millennial mom is part of the most digitally and socially active consumer group ever. Most of the interaction that I have with brands is online through my Facebook feed or through email or websites. So I'm not really watching their commercials on TV. It's because that's not really the most convenient time for me. But when I follow them on Facebook is really when I have the opportunity to, to interact more with them. You will find her socializing on Facebook, communicating with text, bragging on Instagram, and blogging about life experiences. I realized that most parents or millennial moms are dealing with the same things. So it's almost like a community. You can actually just go online and reach out and say, hey, is anybody having this kind of issue? Like, what did you do to solve your issue? The millennial mom will crowdsource her friends for advice on her baby's sleeping habits, access mobile coupons, read online product reviews, and consume video recipes like episodes of The Bachelor. These days I feel weird if I'm not connected. I feel like everybody's connected these days. For me, I use my mobile phone and that's for work and then my iPad is my personal device and that's how I stay connected. The truth is, if you engage the millennial mom with meaningful, relevant content, she will like, share, follow, and become a genuine, loyal brand ambassador. TV, they watch TV, I don't watch TV. I get online later on and watch Hulu or catch up on an app. Other than that, I don't watch TV. So as you look at media consumption of millennial moms, and the reason why we want to attach to millennial moms, they have $170 billion purchasing power each and every year. That's each and every year. So we want to make sure that Florida Citrus is um, a part of that, that spend um, and really connecting with them. Um, millennial moms, just so you know, are about mid-20s to mid-30s. Um, and so those millennial moms are starting to build their families now. And really, um, we want to make sure that we're having that conversation with them to where you know we know some of the older generations um, certainly fell in love with Florida orange juice from the old commercials, um, and that was uh, you know that was a staple in the home. And we want to make sure that we continue that with um, the new generations coming up and as they build their families, and that we're combating that sugar message so they um, make sure that it uh, continues to be a staple in their home. But as you look at this, you know, as I mentioned, millennial moms are no longer um, controlled by when a commercial or when a TV show, when their favorite TV show is going to be on or when it's not. Um, more than 70% uh, of millennial moms don't even have cable advertising. So even if we were to spend um, you know, money on TV advertising, they're not there anyway. And if they are, they're actually clicking, uh, they're DVRing over those commercials. And so what they turn to is more of your online streaming opportunities, like Netflix, Amazon, um, Hulu, and they're actually controlling when they're watching their TV shows and how long. And where, I mean, they may be watching them at the doctor's office while they're waiting or in car line and things like that. And so we want to make sure that we're um, in the right places. We took a quick look at what a $4 million advertising budget would look like. And so back in the days, as you look at those old commercials, um, those were great and wildly successful at the time. But that said, a $4 million um, uh, example would give you in a TV campaign, would give you about 155 million impressions. And as I mentioned, those millennial moms are not even, they don't even have cable. And if they do have cable, they're not watching those commercials anyway. But we know because they're online um, that a digital campaign taking the, that same amount of money would give us 717 million, million impressions. So you're getting more money for what your spend is. That's a 588% increase in what you're doing um, and using those dollars in a more powerful way. So looking at that, we know all of that about millennial moms, but how do we reach them and which way, uh, how are we going to do that? And so what we've done is completely changed the way that we um, approach our advertising, really looking at a digital platform, um, you know, making sure that we're where they are um, on those mobile devices and, and advertising to them. So we want to make sure that we're in a variety of, um, you know, reaching them in a variety of ways. So certainly social media is a huge thing. Um, you know, Facebook, Twitter, we know that's where um, they're at. And they're actually connecting with um, other millennial moms to get advice, to, 
you know, to connect. They're highly social in the digital world. And so we want to make sure that we're having those conversations with them there. Um, so not only doing digital advertising while they're at their uh, personal computer or their laptop or whatever, but also on their mobile device here. But what's amazing with geotargeting now, we can actually reach those same millennial moms while they're in the grocery store to deliver messages to them and remind them to make sure to pick up Florida orange juice. Um, so, and we're reaching out to them in different ways. So it's not just your typical commercial, it's not um, you know, just buy Florida orange juice, but we really want to understand millennial moms and they're faced with a lot of challenges and we want to make sure that we kind of come alongside them and help them um, you know, with some of the challenges that we know um, that they face. Um, you know, they're, they're very busy um, and we want to make sure that we're connecting and providing solutions to where we become a resource for them, um, either in social media or on our website and things like that. And so in a lot of our campaigns, we've kind of switched the way that we reach out to them, um, looking at uh, giving them kind of solutions to some of the problems that we know that they have or the challenges that they have. This is a, a different approach and you'll see kind of how we, it, it might not be what you typically think a Florida orange juice commercial might look like. Um, here's another one. We also do um, recipe tips. We know um, moms are always looking for creative ways um, to, or creative ideas for dinner, and they're tired of doing the same old thing all the time. Um, and this was um, introducing a sunburst smoothie. Jimmy, can you try this one? It may not work. Um, but this is a little, makes a little bit more sense. It's actually made with Florida orange juice. So we're providing a variety of solutions for, um, for, you know, for moms, whether it's recipe ideas or just fun things to do with their kids um, on a rainy or snowy day. But we're also highly engaged um, socially, kind of making sure that we're part of real-time conversations. Um, and I'll get to the top one in a minute. But um, you know, I, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of Elf on the Shelf um, at Christmas time. But that becomes a huge issue for moms. After week one, you run out of ideas. You don't know what to do anymore. Um, you know, and they've got to keep it going because the kids are always waking up, you know, looking where uh, the Elf on the Shelf is. But it's taking those, so, you know, those problems that we know that are simple problems, but things that we can kind of engage that conversation, uh, engage them in that conversation. And so it was, um, you know, a post of, hey, you know, have your elf on the shelf, um, drink orange juice this morning. So, um, but also part of, you know, recipe ideas, as I mentioned, but also, you know, as the new dietary guidelines came out this year, making sure that we're part of those conversations as well. Um, Pinterest, has anybody heard of Pinterest? Um, that's a huge one. That's where millennial moms are going to get solutions and get these answers. And so um, this, uh, you know, kind of shows you some of the things that we've talked about with the blanket fort and the smoothie and really kind of making sure that we're there um, as they're searching for different things. And it's a great way to provide those solutions to moms, but also, um, you know, reinforce that nutritional message. So I'll walk you through some of the other activations that we're doing um, beyond paid and social media and things like that. Um, and so uh, welcome centers. This is, um, 
you know, something that it has been around for a long time. We provide um, free orange juice and grapefruit juice samples at the Welcome Centers on, uh, you know, as uh, you know, tourists cross the, the borders and people look forward to that every year. It's like every time they taste, you know, the Florida orange juice or the grapefruit juice, they're like, ah, oh, I'm in Florida, yes. Um, and so we took a look at that program um, and it was uh, kind of, you know, as budgets were declining, um, we were really taking a look at that going, that might be a program that we um, have to eliminate. But then we re really took a fresh look at that and said, let's actually rebrand um, the Welcome Centers and make sure that our message, that's a great way. We have how many tur tourists that come across the state line every year that um, come to those Welcome Centers and let's um, reinforce that message as they come through um, and get that reminder of that, um, that amazing taste of, um, of juice and so um, and in the past there was no additional messaging that was shared with them it was just a free sample of juice and so really kind of uh, uh, taking a fresh look at that rebranding that um, and really kind of taking a look and making sure that we're sharing the nutritional message um, but we also, the cups before were not branded at all, which is fine, um, but we took a fresh look at that and you know, put the logo that we mentioned. Um, but if you'll notice the hashtag on there, which is how um, a lot of people track conversations and, and engage in conversations in social media. And so we put hashtag OJ selfie on the cup. And on the flip side, it's the grapefruit logo with hashtag GF selfie. Um, anybody know what a selfie is? Okay, okay. Well, I'll show you if you don't know. Um, so it was amazing because take a look at these photos that, um, you know, everybody using the branding of that cup and there's absolutely no communication within the welcome centers that actually says, here's what to do. We just simply put that hashtag on there and here's just, um, I mean, we get, you know, hundreds of these each and every day, fresh and new ones, but take a look at how strategically they place that logo and are so proud to drink that Florida orange juice or that grapefruit juice. Um, and so here's some more. So you can't pay for that kind of branding. It's amazing. Um, and, that's, uh, and that's just simply with that hashtag. So you can see how that lives on. Uh, beyond that, um, National OJ Day is actually May 4th. It's actually something that, um, you know, we wanted to kind of take a look at, um, you know, fresh new ways to, you know, kind of engage consumers. Um, and so uh, we, we found out that National OJ Day was May 4th. Well, we kind of shared that with somebody else as well. Um, so that was kind of a big deal. But we wanted to take a stab at it. So last year we actually had some fun with it. So you can see how we played off of that, um, really kind of, um, uh, having fun and kind of being part of that, you know, that's a huge thing in social media um, with May the 4th be with you. And so this was a different way to kind of share that message and remind people about Florida orange juice. But this was kind of a fun <laughs> post that we did um, that uh, actually had phenomenal <laughs> engagement um, where the shares were phenomenal, the likes were phenomenal, um, and honestly um, hit records in terms of um, engagement of what you might see in, um, in social media, and so um, you know, so it's just kind of fun to to play off of some of that um, and be part of those just conversations that are happening um, and be creative about it. Yay, National OJ Day! Welcome to Atlanta. Welcome to Boston! Welcome to Chicago! Welcome to Channelside Park in Tampa Bay, Florida. Well, it's a day that's being celebrated all across the country. We've got some special events planned for Chicago, Boston, Tampa, and right here in Atlanta. All right. And it's a great chance just to remind people of how great orange juice is and how good for you. Well, in this part of Florida, we really celebrate citrus and orange juice every day. So sure. This, sure. this day is actually a chance for us to share what's amazing inside Florida citrus with the rest of the world. It's important that you consume it as part of a balanced diet, but most Americans are under consuming uh, fruits and vegetables, and this is a great way to get a fruit serving in. 
there is amazing inside. So what's so amazing about orange juice? Today we are celebrating National OJ Day and there's a lot that's amazing about orange juice. We know Americans have long had a love affair with 100% orange juice. There really is a lot of great stuff inside Florida orange juice. We start number one with great taste. You guys can dig in whenever you're ready. Oh, we're, ready. Okay, so we're making more as this you speak. Great that that is your great. Lots of vitamin C, potassium folate. And no added sugars. So we're getting delicious citrus sunshine flavor, but we're also getting these essential nutrients that our body needs, all without added sugars. Well, you know, according to the USDA, about 35% of our added sugars are coming from sodas, sugar-sweetened beverages, fruit punches, energy drinks. For National OJ Day, we're talking about the benefits of 100% orange juice, where you're getting vitamin C and folate and potassium with no added sugar and with amazing, great taste. No, OJ Day. There's amazing inside. Um, just taking a fresh approach to how we, um, you know, how we're reaching those consumers and reminding them of the love for um, for Florida orange juice. Um, and we also, um, you know, I mentioned the sugar debate. One of the key focuses that we do um, is really tracking the issues that we have within traditional and social media to where, you know, the sugar debate, um, you know, watching uh, food. Um, it, you know issues within the food space, whether it's you know use of pesticides in agriculture or you know a variety of issues that may come up, and really protect and defend um, the Florida citrus industry, um, and making sure that we're sharing the positive messages and combating some of those negative messages that take place in the media.